Hey, what's going on guys? It's here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your Android tablet as an external monitor for your Windows desktop or laptop. I'm going to show you three ways, one of them being free and two of them being one time payments. But trust me, they are absolutely worth it. All right. Before we begin the video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. I am a totally independent tech content creator and your support is much appreciated. With that said, let's get going. All right. The first method is using the built in feature of your Android tablet that lets your tablet turn into a screencasting client. For example, on the Xiaomi Pad 7, you have the wireless display extension feature. Enable it and then make sure both your tablet and your PC are on the same Wi-Fi and 5 GHz Wi-Fi is highly recommended for this. Press Windows plus K on your laptop and it should find your Android tablet in the list of wireless displays. Just select it and you are good to go. So by default, it will just duplicate the display and you can choose to enable all kinds of input from your tablet as well, like touch input, pen input, mouse and keyboard. Now, instead of duplicate, choose extend to extend your desktop to your tablet. You can of course change the position of your external monitor depending on the position of your tablet, whether it's on the right or on the top or on the left or on the bottom anywhere. Now, Xiaomi's wireless display extension only allows at maximum 1920 by 1080 resolution at 60 Hz. So you get black bars on the top and the bottom. You can use touch of course and latency is decent. You can also route the audio to the tablet by switching the audio output to your tablet which most likely has much better speakers than your laptop. Image quality is decent as well. I don't find much artifacting. Text is clear. The one thing that I noticed with my specific laptop setup is that the image on the Pad 7 constantly pulses from time to time, especially noticeable on darker colors. Now I did not notice this when I casted Samsung DeX into the Pad 7 from my S20 FE5G. So do let me know your experience with your laptop or PC. Now, if you have a Samsung tablet, like I have the flagship Galaxy Tab S9, you can toggle on second screen and get the same features as the Pad 7. You can enable all the inputs as well. The Tab S9 has a more traditional widescreen aspect ratio of 16 by 10 and it also lets you get up to Quad HD 2560 by 1440 resolution which is much sharper and at the same scaling factor of 100% you can see a lot more information at once due to the higher resolution. Latency is similar to the Pad 7. In terms of image quality, the Tab S9 is definitely better than the Pad 7. The second screen experience on the Tab S9 is actually a lot better than on my last Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which was really awful. Alright, let's take a look at the next method, which I personally consider as the best, most definitive way to use your Android tablet as an external monitor. Now for this, we will use an application known as Super Display. It provides you a trial period of 3 days, after which you can choose to make a one-time payment of 20 US dollars. I actually paid 10 US dollars for it like three years ago. It's absolutely worth it. Let me show you how you can set this up. First, install the super display on your Android tablet. Then install the driver on your Windows PC. I will provide a link in the description. Once done, make sure both your tablet and your PC are on the same Wi-Fi. Again, 5 GHz Wi-Fi is highly recommended and your tablet should detect your PC. Just click on it and you are done. And check this out. Super Display allows you to use the entire 3200 by 2136 resolution of your Pad 7 and it's a super sharp, super clean image. And despite such a high resolution, the latency is still better than Xiaomi's built-in solution as well as Samsung's second screen. It is actually fantastic. Even better is, Super Display also allows you for a more robust wired connection. Now I recommend using a tablet with USB 3 bandwidth that is 5 gigabits per second that the Pad 7 has and also a USB 3 cable obviously. Once connected, again the app will recognize your PC just tap to start the screen extension. I feel the connection is just more stable and latency is even slightly lower, which is great. 
On top of all this, Super Display also lets you customize a bunch of parameters. For example, you can enable up to 120Hz refresh rate both on wired and wireless connections. You can route the computer audio through to the tablet. You can customize the input like if you want to enable actual stylus input from S Pen or anything else or emulate the pen input via touch or enable sonar pen input. You can also customize the image quality based on the bandwidth you have. Once you enable 120Hz, the experience is seriously good with fantastic image quality and motion fluidity, especially over a wired connection. So Super Display is one of the best utility apps on Android, no doubt. The one-time payment of 20 US dollars is absolutely worth it. It comes with a three-day trial, so try it out and then decide to purchase. All right, so now let's talk about the final method, which is using a capture card and HDMI cable. And this method is recommended for the lowest possible latency. And USB 3.0 5 gigabits per second cable and a USB 3.0 Type-C port is mandatory for this method. Now, for this, obviously you will need a capture card. Capture cards come at various price tags. You can get decent 1080p 60 FPS capture cards for around 1500 rupees. This one that I'm using is from Ugreen and it costs around 10,000 rupees. Because this can capture 1440p at 60 FPS and 1080p at 120 FPS. On top of this, it can also do up to 4K 60 Hz HDR pass through. I use this capture card for external game capture when I'm recording benchmarks on this channel as well as on my other channel, the Lustig. So, this is actually the most value for money capture card with these premium features. Now, plug the HDMI output from your PC to the HDMI input of your capture card. Then install this application on your Android tablet called Next Camera USB. Open the app and go into settings and you have a lot of features to customize just like OBS. I like to enable show FPS to monitor the capture card performance. Then plug in the USB cable. I'm using a USB 3.0 type A to type C cable and you have to plug the type C end into the capture card and then plug the host type A end into your tablet using an OTG adapter. Once you do that, the app will automatically detect the incoming USB display signal and ask for permissions, just grant it and that's it. My laptop is actually detecting this as my actual external monitor, so it has made my tablet as the primary display. Now, by default, the capture card is outputting 1080p at 60fps using YUI2 which uses 422 chroma subsampling. But to be honest, I prefer 120Hz. So I switched the format to NV12, which uses 420 subsampling. So color performance is slightly worse, but I don't notice it much. Switching to NV12 allows me to choose a 120 FPS, which makes a much bigger difference to me. Also make sure to choose higher than 60 Hertz for your second screen on your Windows PC. It shows me 240 Hertz for some reason, but it's actually 120 Hertz. Now, you don't have any kind of touch input obviously because this is basically acting as a dumb external monitor. But what you get in return is super low latency and very fluid motion. The setup may look clumsy, but it's a one-time effort. Once you fix everything in place and integrate it into your setup, it can be a permanent solution. There are no ifs and buts with this. It works reliably just like a normal external monitor. Alright guys, so those were my three recommended methods for using any Android tablet as an external monitor. To be honest, I recommend using the super display method the most as it's easy to set up, works well, great image quality, allows both wired and wireless connections and does not cost too much. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to hit like, share and definitely subscribe. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.